Hi, it's Maria, and today we're doing Overview Part 3 in, this, in the Forgiveness to Love series where my life is exposed here. And so this one is titled um, An Existential Journey. All the, um, all the overviews are titled that, and this one is uh, Part 3. Uh, in any event, and the title of this one I have is uh, The Realization of Who We Truly Are. And that is that is the 64, um, you know, gazillion dollar question, truly. And so as we learned in the last video in Overview Part 2, the highest among us understand that it's impossible to love God or whomever you, however you want to call that energy, source energy, the creator, the created, the infinite intelligence of the universe, um, whatever that is, if you actually hate man. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. <laughs> and so the only solution is to heal those wounds that keep human beings in the rampage, in, in bondage, where so many are just so clueless, you know, they just chase that ill-begotten dollar, right? Because to them, money is power, you know? And yet they're truly, um, and yet for many, money is like a gateway to more aberrant um, and ego-driven behavior. You know, there are three cardinal questions that we ask ourselves about our very existence here on this little planet. And uh, many just don't have an answer. They have no clue. And it's hard to believe, I know. The yeah. questions are that we all know, who are we? Because really, when you think about it, really, who are we? Um, and it's just, it's just not um, a ridiculous question. It is something that we all need to ponder. And another, the second question is, where are we? And uh, the third question is, why are we where we are? And surely, um, we're here on this glorious little planet called Earth to do so very much. Yet, it's impossible to do anything if we don't understand our gifts and what to do with them, right? So many people think, oh, we're here to um, stuff our tummies, right, and our garages, and our closets, and our jewelry boxes, and our bank accounts, right, all at the expense of our soul. <laughs> and so, oh my gosh. And so Earth, you know, is our playground and allows us the free will to do just that. We are given free will to choose. Um, yet our uh, role in this is to choose wisely. And um, unfortunately, many do not. And uh, we say, oh, that's just crazy. Yet for some, human life is expendable. You know, uh, those who don't care about their own families, much less their own fellow men. And so I've been so transparent in sharing some of the countless ways that my family has endangered my life on virtually a daily basis as they seem to kind of come after me like some, you know, wild rabbit and deranged creatures foaming at the mouth. <laughs> and I know that's an exaggeration. But sometimes, actually, when we feel hunted and we're in survival mode, um, it usually does involve some type of a beast that's we right. are running from, right? Because we are we are frightened beyond measure. And so we, um, you know, it's that uh, fight or flight response because there's something coming after us and we, we run for dear life. And certainly for me, in my, uh, it was uh, my relationships, my medical care, my legal defense, and my business pursuits. They were all targeted. And so there you have it. And uh, what else is there truly? Um, if if someone goes after those people that you love, if someone goes after your health, um, number, the third one would be your ability to live free. I mean, we're, we're Americans and there are people in other parts of the world that hopefully are watching this too, but freedom is relative, right? It is what we are, have been accustomed to, uh, to enjoying. And the fourth would be finally our vocation, which is our passion. 
um, our sole purpose, or as the French say, our raison d'être. It's our reason for being on this planet. It's our reason for being, um, uh, for having this incarnation, right? And so that's exactly why I'm sharing this, because there have been so many that have been destroyed, and some have been blindsided to the point where they just couldn't cope. And so then, unfortunately, people resort to addictions, and they have breakdowns, and they're in states of depression. And all three of those are plagues that plague our people. And this truly must stop. Um, it's senseless, it's destructive, and it's, it's really insane. And so also our targeted, our friends, our families, our, uh, our relatives, our neighbors, and anyone <laughs> sometimes who dares make eye contact with us, right? Or phones or texts or emails us. And do you see how absolutely asinine that is? It's absolutely incomprehensible. And it's um, unconscionable, really, to any sane individual. And so if we sign up for PayPal or Cash App or whatever, and we realize, you know, we're getting the run around when they say, oh, it's the bank's fault. And then the bank says, no, it's PayPal's fault. And, and so then we realize, oh, somebody else is, is um, they funneled the money to somebody else's account. That's why we're not seeing it in, um, in our account. So someone else is getting our deposits. You know, it's, um, it's almost, it reminds me very much of when I came um, to, to, well, when I lived in Florida and uh, when my, uh, when there were legal issues and my home was taken and I went to the police and they said, no, it's a civil matter. And uh, then the, and they said, go see an attorney. So I saw attorneys and they said, no, it's a criminal matter. Go to the police. And so I went back and forth like, you know, kind of a, a ping pong ball. <laughs> and, and where do you get? You get nowhere, right? Because you're stuck in an endless loop without any resolution. And some who uh, have channels uh, where their videos are hidden you know, or, or their shadow band or whatever they call it where your audience is restricted. Uh, those who want to block us uh, file complaints and they file complaints under aliases, right? So under names that, um, that aren't there, they're fictitious to hide the, so that uh, our truth is hidden. And so uh, therefore what's left? Just lies flood the airwaves. And we've talked about the special days, right? Uh, that's a very narcissistic um, ploy. And special days are days like birthdays and holidays and um, where those days are sabotaged to the max, right? Because those are days when we're so happy. If it's, if it's our daughter's birthday, oh, if it's our, um, our mother's birthday, if it's Valentine's Day, if it's you know Easter, Christmas, or whatever, Thanksgiving, you know, our, and we have so many things going and we're so happy about it and we're looking forward to it. And then all of a sudden, you know, there's some, some ridiculous tragedy. Um, and so that's, it's very common um, among narcissists because they don't want you to be at peace. Um, and then, of course, many of us have those flying monkeys that, you know, I wish that they were, you know, adorable little chimps or little monkeys or whatever. But in fact, they're just really gross human beings who, who actually uh, thrive and get paid by, um, by incurring pain on us. And when you think about it, that is, that is so deranged to actually rejoice at the, um, at the pain and suffering of another. I mean, it's just crazy. Uh, and I'll tell you something silly that um, in my situation, because, um, because my last name when I was married was actually a very common first name. So, and there are many of us who have those names. And so when I get like, oh, I've gotten probably hundreds of Facebook requests, but I know that they've all been or I believe that they've all been at the request of, um, of um, you know, my family because they're all hacked accounts. So, for instance, uh, if it's um, like Richard James 
and then it would be James Richard or um, or William Gordon or Gordon Williams or um, you know those names um, Bill George or George Bill George um, yeah George well it could be George Bill but uh, or Julia Williams or Will Julia anyway it's the ones that have the generally three first names, but um, when you put in the middle name, but they're always all mixed up. And so, uh, and, they, and so that's my clue in my particular situation that somebody isn't for real because, and you know what's really interesting? I thought about this and um, it didn't really hit me at the time, not at all, is that um, in the 25 years that I've been embroiled in the legal system, Many of the judges that were assigned to my cases had um, had names like that in terms of the estate litigation uh, in Florida uh, with my inheritance and even my five-year divorce in Chicago. Uh, yes, they were names, the judges had names that were two first names. Anyway, it's weird, isn't it, how things happen? And then I hear, and then I hear, um, where some have put pictures of me on some sex sites and they have photoshopped my face and they've put them on nude bodies, you know, doing, I don't know, whatever unimaginable to me, but I don't know. Uh, I haven't really seen them. But I was just told that this is going on and I'm not going to go on those sites to go look for them. I just don't care. Anyway, it was, it's just a humiliation tactic. And so how are we supposed to feel about all of that, you know, when, of course, we can't control it all because um, some people are very devious and uh, much more adept at the computer than I am. And so they can, they can do all of that in order to kind of box us in, you know. Or likewise, when um, uh, we've taken out student loans for our children and they complete their education and they have these fabulous jobs making oodles and oodles of money and uh, they stick us with the bill and they aren't interested in um, in helping at all especially in my case you know when I was living in a car <laughs> I had I had all kinds of student loans that I needed to pay back and they just kind of sat there but um, all in all, you know, we can, we can vacillate from boundless gratitude, right, for all the experiences that have surely opened our eyes, right, the eyes of a little Greek girl, uh, to those of a woman whose inner resolve was um, strengthened way, way beyond anything she could have ever imagined, you know. Um, perhaps some of us are still clearing karma from past and other lifetimes and learning so very much in the process when we think in terms of being blessed with these priceless gifts. You know, even when I was a little girl, I rooted for the underdog. And maybe it was that Joan of Arc thing that so many of us little girls like to um, engage in. I felt it was my duty because there are so many underdogs. And in fact, when you think about it, we're all underdogs in some respect uh, and to some extent and our energy is never wasted because we share our journey with others and so criminal behaviors and injustices really continue to plague our planet and keep us in these toxic mindsets toxic behaviors and toxic relationships yet we need to be strong and move on and our higher energy can, simply cannot tolerate the negative and so we're to remember humanity is on the precipice of change and a new world is truly upon us, a new earth. Really, the toxicity that has clouded humanity is not sustainable and cannot make it to the next level without human beings recognizing the love they are. I oh, wonder what's going on there. The love that surrounds them and the love within each <laughs> and the love within and around each and every instance, situation, and even, oh my gosh, uh, every plant, animal, microbe, molecule, and atom. You know, that love affects everything. And so 
we need to move on from the pain that has taught us so much. And you know, Aristotle wrote, we cannot learn without pain. And I uh, read another quote, which I thought was very, uh, very timely. There are two types of pain in the world, pain that hurts you and pain that changes you. And so let's see our pain as that which changes us. Good idea? I think so. I like to think about it that way. Most human beings actually look outside themselves, right, for validation, and they hop from one partner to another, and many times without even knowing their names. Um, yet the building blocks to meaningful relationships are respect, loyalty, commitment, benevolence, empathy, compassion, you know, and certainly loving oneself and forgiving oneself because without those, we can't possibly move forward. Um, without those, truly, we have nothing. And so we stay stuck in toxic cycles with wounded people because both sides are looking for what they don't have. And so they can't give, right? We can't give what we, what we don't own, what we don't possess, what we don't have. When we realize the question, who are we? What are we? We might answer, we are nobody. We are merely consciousness. We are divine energetic beings who've chosen to incarnate and evolve on this glorious planet um, as a miraculously gifted human being in the most amazing clothing of our skin, right? We are here as human beings. And the next question is, where are we? And some might say we are three rocks from the sun. Remember that show? On, or others might say we're just on planet Earth, uh, while others might add that we travel in multiple dimensions of nowhere where there is no space and no time. Einstein told us that, right? No space, no time. Why? Are, and then the, the third question is, why are we where we are? And perhaps the answer to that is for the expansion of our consciousness. And it's in these answers that we can monitor our very own awakening. At times, our compassion, though, can override our sensibilities, and we interpret malice for mental illness. And I have been guilty of, of, um, of giving people the out, <laughs> uh, and yet it, it doesn't serve us. We owe it to ourselves and to all the good people in our life to recognize the face behind the mask, whoever that might be for you, be it a relation or a stranger. And I recently read a quote that kind of washed away any doubt, and I'd like to share that with you. And it was, every society in the world has people with mental health problems, but they don't mow each other down with assault rifles, right? And so um, this rings so true for many of us. And so, furthermore, the, the shattering of one's stability is a mind-blowing betrayal. And since money is power, some human beings readily sell their very soul to feed their ego. And we will explore this concept a bit more in um, overview number four. Uh, and so, we all face these issues, and I, uh, my goal is for you to find this information most revealing and perhaps even a godsend for you. And so as you move forward in life while on this glorious little planet called Earth, let's, um, let's go to overview part four and see what we can uh, unravel there as well. And so thank you for being here and may we all be blessed beyond measure. I love you.